Hey guys, John Davenport here from Fogaropoly.com with another Let's Edit video. This week we're going to be uh, recovering something that needs some help. Um, so I have this photograph here, it's severely underexposed. And I'm actually going to show you something pretty cool uh, about how Lightroom, how powerful Lightroom is at recovering photos uh, when they're shot with the RAW format. So I've zoomed in, in on the photo here and we're in uh, the develop module, we'll go to the basic tab and I'm just going to grab my exposure slider and I'm just going to raise it up and as I do you can see that this little kid here ran into my photo as I was taking it. So we're going to actually get rid of him uh, along the way but uh, he did run in there and it, it's kind of amazing when you look at the original photograph you can barely tell that there's anything there and then as I raise this up you get that color back um, you even get some detail and even though there's a little bit of noise here and once we are done processing that will be kind of the last step is to kind of clean up the noise a little bit it's not to the point where it's unrecoverable noise you've recovered the detail from the image but you can definitely still recover and use this photograph in print. Uh, so let's continue along with the uh, rest of the recovery here. So we're plus point, uh, 4.5 on the exposure. We're actually going to bring that highlights back down to recover those details in the sky and we're going to increase our shadow all the way there. So we're minus 100 plus 100 and plus 4.5 so we've probably added quite a bit of noise and if I zoom in here you can see there's there is quite a bit of noise going on let's add just a little bit of contrast um, a little bit of vibrance for that color pop and maybe just a touch of clarity plus point plus 10 or so uh, so that's all I'm gonna do in terms of the basic edits for this photo for now uh, before we clean up the image in terms of noise, let's just clone this guy out here. Sorry, buddy, but you are going to disappear. Just want to line that up as good as possible. Um, yeah, that should work. And then zoom out. You can, can't even tell that he was there anymore. So we're in good shape. The last thing I'm going to do actually is come in here with a grad filter. I need to reset these couple of sliders here. And basically all I want to do is add a little bit more shadow detail to that foreground. And actually, you know what? I did lie. I want to add a little bit of warmth to this photo. So let's increase that uh, maybe just over 7K or so. And maybe add just a little bit of magenta plus 13 there. Uh, just enough to add a little bit of that kind of late afternoon glow to the image. So here we are. We have a photograph that was basically a trash can photo and it's become something quite interesting. But if you zoom in, uh, you know, and really look close, it's got, it does have quite a bit of noise. You have some um, splotchy color noise over here and uh, definitely some noise. So let's let's go down to our detail slider and see what we can do. Um, we're going to want to remove the color noise, so let's do that as best we can. Um, preserve some detail, add some smoothness. And you can see it's it's still there, but it's it's come a long way. And then I'm going to remove some of this um, other noise as well. Preserve some of that contrast, preserve some of those details. So, uh, you know, we've come quite a ways. It might be a little bit soft now, so let's um, let's just add a little bit more detail here. Let me bring some of this back. You might end up bringing in a little bit more noise when we do this, but um, I'm going to make sure I'm only sharpening the harder of the lines there. So overall, I think it's still quite a usable image, um, even though you know it might it might still have a little bit of noise here. If you're unless you're printing uh, very very large, it's not something that should be too noticeable. So now what I'm going to do is actually hop into Topaz Impression, 
Um, I've showed you the program in kind of a high-level overview uh, type of thing before a couple weeks ago. Um, this time what I want to do is take a little time and kind of go through how to use Topaz Impression to kind of transform a photo. So we'll take this photograph and we'll really work through the edits and I'll kind of explain everything and, and uh, we'll do that. So I'll uh, be back when I'm once I'm in Topaz Impression, it'll take a little bit for it to load. So let's just click on this. We're going to edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments, and I'll be back once it's loaded. Okay, guys, so here we are in Topaz Impression, and it's just kind of loaded uh, the basic featured presets. Uh, I've spent a little time off camera looking for the one I want to work on because it does, uh, while I'm recording, Topaz Impression has a tendency to load really slow, so I don't want to spend a lot of time looking at all of these. But just to show you a couple of them, the Da Vinci Sketch one is kind of cool, um, and it's something that I may work on in the future off camera, or maybe even do another video with it. Uh, but the one I want to work on today is the color pencil number one. And you can see the idea behind Impression is that you first get a preset to start with. So that's how this whole program is set up. You have your photo, presets on the right hand side, you click a preset, it gives you a starting point, then you click on the little icon that appears and you edit your, you enter your editor. Now this is where kind of the magic of Topaz happens. You have the ability to change things and customize everything. And then you can save things as presets for your own use in the future, uh, which is kind of nice as well. So I'm going to leave the brush type the same, but just to show you, um, all you would do is just click on a brush type and you would get a different look and feel. Um, very different, in fact. I'm going to keep it as type number seven for this video, but know that uh, a lot of these other ones are very cool as well. I do want to explain something to you about the background. So you're actually in, envision that you're working as a painter, you would be painting on a canvas of sorts. So right now my canvas is actually white, like a normal canvas might be, but you could paint on a purple canvas if you want. And when I do that, you'll notice that everything that was white is now purple. Now, of course, that's not going to look very well for this particular photo, but you might find a scene that you like to use the purple in. I'm going to go back to white. Uh, just because I think that looks a little better. We're actually going to end up covering up most of the white anyway because we'll go back up to our stroke and we're going to kind of modify it. So if I zoom in here, I can show you that you can see all these holes in these strokes and that's basically uh, a few different things can actually control that. So you have your brush size, which is basically the size of the brush. Uh, obviously, if you increase that, you would fill in the holes. Paint opacity is another one that will uh, really affect the way your um, strokes fill in the holes. So if you think about it, if you go to the left hand side, just like in Lightroom or Photoshop actually, uh, your opacity would be reduced, thus being more of kind of a sketch. If you go all the way to the right, you're going to get a very thick, very intense look to your strokes. So that's what will happen in a second there. Uh, I'm going to go back kind of to about 0.2 or so. Uh, stroke width, again, this, if I increase the width of the stroke, I will get more coverage. It's also going to be more smudged. Um, think about how how um, that kind of makes sense to you. Uh, you know, wider stroke is going to cover more area, but it's going to kind of overflow into each other, so you get more smudging. And, you know, stroke length does the same thing. You get longer strokes, which kind of looks chaotic. Uh, spill and smudge and coverage, all similar types of thing. Coverage actually creates kind of a vignette look, um, and it's basically the coverage of the canvas that you're working on. So if you have a very small coverage, you're actually only covering the center of the canvas. And uh, right now we're at basically 100% coverage, so we're working on the whole canvas. Um, and smudge would you know, kind of smudge the lines together. So very uh, simple types of things there. What I'm going to do for this 
video and for this photo is I'm actually going to increase the brush size a little bit. And what I want to do is I want to basically get rid of as much of this uh, background as I can, but still retain a lot of the details in the photo. And I'm going to do that by increasing the brush size. And I think if I reduce the stroke width, I will be in good shape. So let's see how this looks. So if you think about the stroke width, if you reduce the stroke width, you get kind of finer lines, uh, but your brush size kind of counteracts that. So you might end up with kind of the same look um, just by doing these types of things. I'm gonna just go a little bit wider just because I want, I, I basically want no none of that canvas to show through. So we need to cover that up and maybe just fill it in with just a little bit of the opacity there. And that should take care of the rest of it. Yeah, so that's good. Um, you know, there's a lot that I could do to kind of fix this uh, even more. Maybe we can shorten the length of those brush strokes just a little bit. Ooh, I don't like that. That I did not like. One thing I do have a problem with, um, Topaz Impression does not have an undo button as far as I can tell. You have a reset button which brings you back to the beginning. You can click on the names which resets stuff to basically the middle. Um, so you can see here this is how far I've changed the image from its default setting. If I click on a name it will go back to that middle point. Um, but there's no command or control Z, there's none of that stuff. So you can't kind of go back, which is kind of unfortunate. That's something they need to build in. So you have the ability to control the different uh, color tones of the image. So I'm gonna come over to the blues and I'm gonna try and darken those up a little bit. So let's pull the blue lightness down and this should darken those blues. I don't wanna go too dark because it may start looking fake, but that looks pretty good. Maybe add a little bit of saturation. Try and get that blue a little more blue. Yeah, yeah, I like that. And then I can come to the yellows here. Maybe, um, maybe add a little bit of lightness and drop the hue down so we get a little more orange there. How's this look? Yeah, I like that. That looks pretty good. Maybe just drop this down just even a little bit more. Bring in a little more orange. Really going for that golden look, that like very golden hour look. There we go. And plus we have a nice late, like nice golden fall look as well with those trees there. Um, the other thing that I want to take a look at, so the reds, if I if I hover over these, I don't know if you notice, if you hover over them, you get kind of a red overlay to see what's being affected. So you can see this is affecting mostly the foreground, some of the building and the trees. Um, so what I want to do is try and brighten that up just a little bit there. And I may take a look and just see what happens if I increase that red hue just a little bit. Do I get more of a more of those browns back in there. Yeah, I'm kind of liking the direction this is going. Yeah. Ooh, that was too far. <laughs> so you can see it, it changes once you get to a certain point. It's very, very, very quick. Uh, part of the problem is that I'm going a little fast here because it's actually loading. It takes a little while to load. So I need to go back to where I was before. And this is a downside of not having an undo button. Just a touch more, maybe like 0 0.25, 0 0.26. Yeah, I like that. So that kind of evens it out a little bit. I like that look a lot better than where we were at. Okay. So here's a kind of a general final edit in terms of this. I'm not gonna deal with the lighting or the brightness here basically um, because I think that Lightroom does a better job. Like why would I change the brightness or contrast or add a vignette here when I'm gonna be back in Lightroom in a few minutes and be able to do a whole bunch more 
using that program. Now obviously if you were using Topaz Impression as a standalone editor, you would potentially use these to add a little contrast or whatever to the image. Uh, but if you're using Lightroom or have access to it, I would strongly urge you to just click on Save As and it will pump your photo back into Lightroom which will then allow you to uh, continue editing as you please. So here we are, take a second and there we go, we're back in Lightroom with our edited image. Uh, we can hop back into our basic tab and like I said you could add a little bit of contrast here, um, maybe reduce the highlights a little bit. Um, See, I kind of want to just turn that saturation down just a touch. It's a little over the top for me right now. Uh, I am going to hop into the HSL tab and I'm going to try and see if I can just soften those blues. I just want to soften them just a little bit there. Something like that. So I think all in all it's been a pretty successful edit. Um, it's definitely transformed the photo from the beginning. I mean, it's obviously transforming something. You're not doing a true-to-life photo here. You're doing something more creative, more artistic, and that's what Topaz Impression is all about, creating art from a photograph. You can either take it or leave it. It is what it is. But I've really had a lot of fun with this program, and that's kind of why I've done, I think this is the third video that I've featured it in. Uh, I think it's really, really, uh, actually a very good program, and I hope that Topaz gets... Um, some of the features added to it that I would like, like the ability to have an undo button or the ability to do more localized adjustments to the photo. Uh, but all, all in all, I think it's a fun program and I hope you enjoyed this little deeper look at how it works and everything. And of course, if you did like this video, please do click the like button. It helps uh, YouTube send this video out and suggest it to other people who may be looking for similar content and therefore helps Fogropathy grow. Uh, if you are a first time viewer, please don't forget to subscribe. And as always, I will see you again soon. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.